U.S. Bank is proud to join Deluxe as a partner in Season 5 of the Small Business Revolution, bringing their passion for small business to Fredonia, New York. For more financial tips and resources, go to usbank.com backslash SBR. Yes! I love that it's snowing. We've never done one of these in the snow. You know, Deluxe does the Small Business Revolution because we really want to prove how important small businesses are to our communities. We have got seven incredible businesses here. I would love to introduce you to Carla Pucciarelli from the Hair Bar. I can't wait to introduce you to Carla. Uh, she is a military mom, young kids at home. Uh, she's been in the hair dressing business for a while, but has just opened her own salon. So she's a young business owner. Love it. Carla! Hi, Carla! Hello! <laughs> this time. Hi, how are you? Hey. I'm great. I feel like his hair is looking good, but like maybe a little trim. What do you think? Yeah, he's doing pretty good there. Nice direction. He's got Thank some, you. you know, nice highlights in there, I see. No, that's just aging. Yes, I know. I mean, oh, I oh highlights, oh, yeah. Yes. I had my season of highlights a long time ago. Oh, I do like, remember that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you did, yeah. Yes. Yes. It's like spring break. Some things you just never do again. <laughs> All right, now so what do I do? Are, are you really letting Amanda cut my hair? This yeah, is, oh. Yeah, this is fun. What could possibly go wrong? Well, I mean, see, Amanda is really good with your business, right? <laughs> but this is my business. All right, let's see. lighter <laughs> so much lighter small towns across the country are fighting for their survival with the odds stacked against them but what happens if we join that fight if we dedicate a little money a lot of experience and thousands of hours of work into one town focusing on the businesses at the heart of their main street the revolution became a national movement with over 30,000 towns nominated for a $500,000 makeover and more than a million votes cast for the season five winner. Hello, Fredonia! But what started as a revitalization for Fredonia, New York, became a desperate struggle for small businesses across the country. Amanda Brinkman and her team of marketing experts at Deluxe are rolling up their sleeves doing what they do for millions of small businesses every day. And they're not alone. Renovation icon Ty Pennington will be working with the team to rehabilitate the town's buildings, while a whole cast of experts and partners help Fredonia's entrepreneurs face down a global economic crisis. Every episode, we'll be working with a new small business to see if we can change the odds. If in a moment unlike anything this team has ever seen, we can keep the revolution alive. I feel like I was always working for something. Whether it be your little lemonade stand once a week, or like in high school, I used to do updos to all my girlfriend's hair, charging like $20 an updo. <laughs> I was always like a hustler trying to make some money. My parents, they wanted me to get into like finance or accounting. I was really good at math, but I cannot do nine to five, no. I was 13 when I started at Henry's Salon. Henry is my dad's twin brother, my uncle, and he was huge in teaching me all the ins and the outs, the tricks, everything. I was full time at his salon for probably at least like seven, eight years. I loved working for my uncle, but I just always wanted my own thing. I remember that she actually had offers to go around and be on stylist teams. She opted to stay here in our small town and she knew she wanted her own, her own place and she just stuck with it. Okay, I started the business in 2017. I was pregnant at the time along with a husband in the military and trying to do this, it was really, really, really hard. But 
I love having my own business because it's like a direct reflection of who I am. I love it too. People come here because they feel comfortable and they make us feel good on the inside, not just our appearances on the outside. I don't remember what I did five minutes ago at home, but when someone sits in my chair, I remember what they said six weeks ago. You become almost like family with these people. There were times when I couldn't get in on her time, she couldn't get in on my time, so she came to my house, babe on a hip, to do my hair, just so that we could both continue to do what we could do. I'm so passionate about what I do, but I definitely don't have the time I want to put into it. Family comes first, so my kids have to be my top priority. Having a husband in the military, leaving a lot, you know, on military leaves and trying to be here and not let my customers or my team down, it's like, just like treading water. It's sad for all of us. There was like numerous times that I called my sister crying, you know, like, I don't think I can do this anymore. I had a couple offers. I thought, well, maybe this is the time to sell. For me to kind of even contemplate giving it up is terribly emotional for me. If we were to lose this, I would lose my safe place to go, the homeness, the place where I know I'm going to walk out and feel beautiful, the place that, oh, I don't want to entertain that question. I didn't really know what else to do. You know, only three years in, I was beating myself up about it. But Small Business Revolution happened, and kind of felt like I got my spark back, and I thought, OK, you could do this. You could do this. It fueled my fire a little bit again, you know? Like, this is like a sign. Get me back on track. As a working mom, you spend a lot of time feeling like you're just trying to keep your head above water. So we're sending in a little life preserver, Charlie Brackney Love co-founder and salon director of not one, but three award-winning house salons in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So beautiful. Carly, a risk of the trade. Love it. Hi, Hi Carla. Hi. Oh, this is Hi. Charlie. Oh, so nice to meet you. It's so nice to meet you. Congratulations. Oh, what a huge you. deal. Do you want to show us around a little? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So this is where we greet people. I like the little out. bay window yeah. feel. I think that's cozy. Mm -hmm. I think what's going to be great is to try and extend what you've done here through the space. So these are our stations. And is this all you have in terms of your retail display and product? Yeah. I feel like it's going to be a huge opportunity for her. For sure. Yeah. Because hairdressers, we're not salespeople. <laughs> we, you know, we do not want to feel like we're here to sell shampoo. Right. But the numbers show that when clients are buying retail from us, they trust us more, which mm -hmm. improves retention. Oh, really? And it's just better for the business in general. So I see three sinks and two chairs. Yes. So the middle sink doesn't work. It makes it so difficult. Dealing with hair color, like sometimes it has to. have to get it off. Yes, yeah. yes. So this wall was here when I opened. <laughs> I almost feel like this is kind of like the timeout area. Yeah, I yeah. agree. When we think about layout, you have to think about, you know, productivity per square foot. Yeah. So you would so. be open to looking at kind of overall oh, maximizing absolutely. space layout. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we aren't even halfway through the <laughs> no space. Yet. I know. Let's, <laughs> let's keep let's, going. Yeah. When I first opened, we had someone that offered pedicure, manicure. Okay. We don't anymore. There's mm. all sorts of ways you could use this space. Yeah. Some people come in through here, right? Yep. Some customers, this could be their first, first impression. First, yeah. Yes, and I hate that. Okay, <laughs> I do. Okay. Yes. If we do just a few things from a design perspective, it wouldn't even be structural. It's just it's about paint, it's about yeah. aesthetics, it's about furniture. Furniture. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, so I feel like there's a lot of potential in the physical transformation. Uh, give us a sense for how healthy the business is. I feel like we're doing, we're doing good. The oh. individual stylists, I think they're doing great. I know me. Um, I feel like I'm just like breaking even, just kind of staying afloat. What are your pain points? Where are you like, I wish this was easier or I wish this was more efficient? Oh, scheduling can be a mess. We each have our own phone line. And then we have a Facebook also where I post our phone numbers. And then if I do get messages, I usually send a text out to the girls. You probably don't have a common booking tool or calendar right now. Everyone uses just like pretty much a paper book. I think the booking interface is really mm -hmm. important, and the most uh, modern ones are all cloud-based. 
I know you've mm -hmm. got kids at home. And so you can run reports from home and get some of that administrative mm -hmm. work done in a way that doesn't require your body being here. Mm -hmm. Do you have a website? No, we currently don't have any website at all. That's a problem for a couple of reasons. One, we're losing a lot of search authority around oh, this definitely. category. When yes. people search for hair salons, which there are a lot in Fredonia, mm -hmm. you aren't showing up. But it's also um, going to help us tell your story, what they can expect of the experience. We can see photography. Everything will communicate this upscale feel. Yes. And so yes. you don't have to say the words, we are an upscale boutique. <laughs> we will let the visuals and that experience of, of the online presence tell that story of, of your brand, really. That will help all of us feel more confident then mm -hmm. in you know, upping our prices, because I definitely still don't think that we are charging what we should. So pricing is ultimately about value. Okay. People want to feel like they are, uh, you know, getting their money's worth. Mm -hmm. And if you can do something to set yourself apart in the industry, in this community specifically, there's value there. Yes. When you really hit it, no matter the business, like when, when I'm at house, I want to like be there longer. So we actually have people come to their appointment early just to spend just more time. See, I was just yeah. gonna say And that. then they'll stay a little bit late. I'll be like, girl, finish your coffee, finish your glass of yeah. wine. There's no rush to get out of here. Uh, wine. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> at the, yes. When I first opened too, I was like, God, it would be nice to like offer like a beverage at the bar. Beverage bar in general, like think about making it. How beautiful can you make it? Mm -hmm. you know, how special can the water be? And it's just like these little details that elevate it. Mm -hmm. Everybody would be on board with that mm -hmm. for sure. I love her. Like, I think she has great energy. Absolutely. And she's got such a gracious heart. And you can tell that she just cares so much about her team, about the space, about this town. And that's really going to come to life in her business. Mm -hmm. Oh, just to have Charlie here, Amanda, everyone. It's like, this is real now. This is going to be life changing for me here, for this team. I'm beyond excited. I think we have our physical renovation list. All right, we're talking floor. I get rid of this wall. We gotta do something about this right. bay of sinks. And this wall, I mean, luckily it isn't load bearing, but you've got, got a lot of electricity running through it, so it's not gonna be an easy, just like, let's knock it over. Okay. Do we know what's underneath this? I mean, you've got your vents right here, so you should be able to tell. Yeah, and you've got some plywood. That's a surface we can, we can put a floor on. Let's look at the three sinks, the three wide sinks. Yes. Revamping a place like the hair bar, it has to look like a million bucks. We're gonna need an old new look that's really clean and professional. You're gonna have to make a huge transformation. Anybody who's ever had a salon or barbershop they love knows it's about so much more than a haircut. We don't have as many community gathering places as we used to, but this little slice of culture has endured, the same as it's always been. There's something intimate about it. Conversations, the proximity, the touch. We never knew how much we needed those things until we were no longer able to have them. It's been a whirlwind. I stopped working the Saturday before all the salons closed just because I was nervous for my kids and us as a team decided that we were going to close, I think, two Fridays ago and then actually the day that we were closing, the governor put out that everybody had to close Saturday night. And yes, I wanted to be there for all our guests, but it's just like our health and our safety is way more important than, than anything in the world. It has been terrible for me as an owner and tremendously hard on all my stylists. I just feel so helpless. You know, you don't really know what to expect I'm worried about the business, that's for sure. For industries like Carla's, where social distancing is truly impossible, no one is likely to have a strong 2020, no matter how successful they were before. A good year is just staying in business, and we have to make sure that happens for Carla. Back in Minneapolis, we were trying to figure out how to continue to do our jobs, which looked very different than it ever had before. You know, the stakes are kind of high right now. We're staring down the possibility that salons are all gonna have to be closed for a while. 
I think we really take advantage of this downtime that she's going to have to have at the salon so that when she is able to reopen, she can hit the ground running. There's a lot that needs to change, starting probably with the floor, because I don't think it's the upscale vibe that she really needs to set her self to the place that I think her business could be. From a marketing perspective, we can do a lot with her branding to also communicate that upscale boutique feel. And I think from an operations perspective, we've been talking a lot about maximizing square footage. She's gonna have to expand it out a little bit to get clients in because we have to accommodate the social distancing now. And all those people who've been doing their DIY hair will need to have it fixed. So <laughs> that'll be yeah. good for Carla as well. While we went to work on some of those medium-term solutions, someone from the Deluxe team was talking to Carla pretty much every day, brainstorming ideas that we could execute immediately. We coached Carla through a social media plan, giving lockdown-friendly hair care tips to limit the DIY damage and keep the hair bar at the front of her customers' minds. At this time, right now, where we're all quarantined, we're not seeing anybody, we're not doing anything, is a perfect time for you to train your hair not to be so overly oily. We notice that your Google listing has not been claimed or verified. And that's gonna be very important, especially with COVID. Google expects some delay, so we wanna take care of that as quickly as we can. We keep saying safety is the new luxury. All of our desk interaction is going um, contactless, so people will... No matter how many precautions you take, almost every decision these days comes with some level of risk. We had to make sure that when Carla was able to open, she was protected legally. Hi! I'm super excited to introduce you to Deborah. Uh, she leads our team at Deluxe that helps tons of businesses just like yours incorporate and get the licenses that they need. And we make this so you can do all of it without ever having to leave your house. The traditional reason of why someone would form an LLC is to protect yourself. There's a barrier between your business and your mm -hmm. personal assets. And I think that's one of the critical components of forming an LLC. Nobody was taking it easy. But the truth is, we all still felt helpless. Even the renovations were being put on hold. And all the marketing, the operational advice, none of it mattered if the hair bar couldn't open its doors. Carla was running out of time. You know, I haven't been back. I gotta go gather some stuff, but I almost couldn't do it to myself because it's been so difficult. <laughs> I'm not charging my girls or George for rent. Yeah, I know that I have a mortgage to pay too, but I just can't imagine what they're all going through on top of it. But um, yeah, I'm looking into some loans right now. <sighs> Carla, we can't imagine how that feels. In May, Carla finally got a glimmer of hope. What started to turn things around for the hair bar and thousands of other small businesses like it was a spirit of collaboration and shared purpose that extended well beyond the small business revolution team. Through a monumental act of will and coordinated effort, the state of New York was able to flatten the curve. Carla could start to imagine what it might be like on the other side. We're hoping that we're able to open June 2nd. Yeah, hopefully we'll know next week and um, we can start opening our books and scheduling people. With the reopening on the horizon, it was time to get back to all the work we'd originally planned to do. And for the team at Deluxe, that meant figuring out a safe new way to collaborate from afar. Welcome to the Small Business Revolution Command Center. Devin is gonna walk you through some pretty incredible logo designs. So here we have pulled together four different concepts for you. We want to give you something that's truly unique to you and that you feel proud to run around town in. The first one, I like how clean it is. I don't like the kind of cursive writing in them. I like how hair kind of stands out in the two bottom ones. So Carla, would you be open to separating hair and bar? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. We can push all that feedback and come back to the table with a second round of concepts for you. Let's talk a little bit about the website. So I want to make sure that we've got a portfolio on the site. I also saw that there was a lot of search traffic around weddings. And so we have an opportunity to do a wedding portfolio specifically so that brides can come and see what you offer. Having a wedding page is like perfect. We've actually oftentimes talked about us putting together a portfolio of photos and stuff in our work and you just haven't gotten around to it. Awesome. We're going to take these wires. We're going to blend them with the branding that Devin's put together and the photography that we're going to get for you. And then we're going to craft that high end salon experience. I am so excited. <laughs> OK, one question before we move off from website. Right now on the homepage, we have a scheduler tool. So everyone has their own 
um, line for booking and stuff. So I think it'd be really hard to utilize online booking. Okay, that makes sense. So we can replace that with the right call to action for how you would want them to book appointments. Awesome, I'm so excited. <laughs> With her brand coming into focus and renovations cranking back up, it was a perfect time for Carla to hook up with Charlie to get some inspiration for her new space and some tips on how to organize your salon in the era when, as Charlie puts it, safety is the new luxury. Hey, Carla. Hi, Charlie. It's so great to see you. I'm gonna show you around one of our locations. Awesome. Our computers are distanced right now, um, six feet apart for check-in processes. This is our green wall right here. So this is uh, a favorite selfie spot for people. Ooh. You'll see these sanitized cards around the salon. Uh, on the back of them, it says sanitization in process. All of our stations are six feet apart. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you so much. This is our retail area. It's adjacent to the floor so that when people are done with their clients, they just walk right over. And the back stock is stored right beneath them, so that's nice and easy. Oh, nice. That's oh, yeah. awesome. That's it. It is absolutely yeah. beautiful, Charlie. I wish I was there in person. You are absolutely beautiful. I wish you were here too. Yeah. Charlie, how was it like in Minneapolis with all the protests? Did it affect your business at all? Yeah, you know, there were protests all over the city, um, and rightfully so. As a business owner, I, of course, didn't want my businesses damaged, uh, but I also fully understand the sentiment. Yeah. It was a surreal experience, but I think I, I really genuinely hope it creates change. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah. Not many of us have lived long enough to remember a year as painful as 2020. Where do you start rebuilding when so much feels broken? And as the protests swept across the country, COVID kept spreading too, and small businesses kept going under. Carla was fighting to keep that from happening to the hair bar. She'd even brought in her family to do demolition on the building when contractors and permits got held up. And it was our job to help her protect that dream. That's amazing that they've been able to make that kind of progress on their own. Yeah, I mean, while Deluxe was paying for the materials, it was great that they owned the building so they could actually be inside their own space working on it. I think the big punch of change we can give these guys is a new floor. So let me show you the sort of sample I was thinking. Go with like a really nice warm tone like this. Can you see that? Yes, I love it. That will be exactly like kind of that boutique upscale experience that we're trying to yeah. really convey through her branding. That's perfect. It was exciting to see the space rounding into shape, but knowing how much revenue salons were inevitably going to lose this year, Carla needed to have a solid grasp of the numbers. So we brought in financial expert Morris Jackson from U.S. Bank to crack open the books. So when you started back in 2017, how did sales start off that year? And then where, how, how has sales progressed over the last three years? So I would say that I've gotten busier over the past three years. I've brought in other renters, which has brought in extra income in a sense, too. So we started with only, I think, two of us. And now I think we're up to six or seven. Oh, great. How much are you making on booth rentals? Do you know that? Okay, so it's three seventy-five a month, and there's five or six of them. Do you know how much money you made personally last year? Forty-five, fifty thousand, I think. I'm not really sure. The business brought in the forty-five, but after all of the expenses that they're placing against your personal styling, so from this you made. $3,000 last year. Yes, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. We need to make sure you're taking home more money. You're a business owner. Even just as a stylist, you should be taking home more than that. Right now, you're, a lot of the building expenses are going against your personal styling fees, and we don't have visibility into, is this all of the building expenses? Okay, so I think the way that my accountant does it is just put all that rental income with the apartments I have upstairs. So you also make income on the space upstairs as well? Yes, yeah. Without those, I don't even think I'd be alive right now because I feel like I pay the taxes, I pay the water with that income. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. And is that, a separate, is that a separate LLC or entity in terms of rental income? 
I am, I'm not quite sure on that. Yeah, so then you should have literally three breakdowns. You should have an income statement just on your property rentals that you have upstairs, right? You should have an income statement just on the business that includes the booth rental and any expenses that are derived from the business. And then you should have a third income statement with, which is just your stylist income. Then you're gonna be able to make decisions about how much cash do I have to invest in inventory? How much more should I be moving? Yeah. Knowing your numbers is, is literally like taking off the, the what, what would this be? The blinders, yeah, thank the bl you. Yeah. It's like taking off the blinders and being able to tell yourself, do I have enough cash or not? Sometimes this year felt like one hard conversation after another, barely any of them in person. But when Carla was finally able to open her doors again, we all got a reminder of what we've been working toward. We managed to make it work. You know, it took a little bit of time to get used to, but everyone's more comfortable and understands that if we do what we have to do, then we still can provide great service to our customers. I love being back in it. I love making people happy and feel beautiful, but it takes mom guilt to a whole new level now. We're working extra hours and just the fear of bringing this virus home to our families, you can't shake it. I don't know if there really is a balance, to be honest with you. I just think that you kind of just really have to just do your best, you know? For those of us who have lived it, we don't need the statistics to tell us. COVID has been absolutely brutal for working moms. And by the numbers, female inclusion in the workforce has dipped below 55% for the first time since 1986. That is some hard fought ground to lose and we have to get it back. We had one final meeting left on the books with Carla. And needless to say, we were going into it with a little added motivation. Well, good morning, Carla. We wish we were there with you. Yes, hi, how are you? No, miss you guys. Carla created a little video for us so that we can watch from afar and see what a difference it's made. We moved our reception area to the side and kind of right beside that are two beautiful, huge shelves full of retail product for our customers. Adding retail is gonna be huge. The most exciting part of the renovation was changing that checkered black and white floor to this new beautiful herringbone floor that we have. We took the floor all the way through the back, so it's nice and uniform, really gives a different vibe in the salon. And then we took out this middle wall that was here and we added three more stations on this wall. So now we have a total of eight stylists we could actually have at the salon. Now I'd like to show you our new wash sinks. This has completely increased our customer's experience. We knocked down the wall in between the waxing room and what used to be our pedicure room and made it a nice processing area for our customers. So the front of the salon is one of my most favorite parts. And now having the new logo and the new awning to top it off really just gives the whole salon a better feel. It's amazing, congratulations. Thank you, I'm so pleased, I'm so excited about it. I still, I still like walk in and I can't believe it almost, you know? It's just beautiful. Now that back wall unit was a total your inspiration, Charlie, with your green wall, yeah. Well, thank you, I'm glad you could take some of the stuff that we've done that's worked so well for Hair Bar. It's so fun to see the space completely transformed. Now we wanna talk a little bit about how we've actually transformed your brand as well. After working with you on your logo, this was our final logo design that we landed on. When the decal went up on the window of the salon, I drove by and I was actually on my way, I didn't know it was going up, and I was like stopped in my tracks. Like I was like shaking, I wanted to cry because it was just, it was beautiful. It is so perfect. And this is a logo that you could see in LA, in Manhattan. Like this is incredible. I'm so happy for you. You wanna see how your branding and your new logo uh, look when applied to a web experience? I love it. I honestly never thought I'd have a website. It was just like always just on that wish list if I ever get to it, but it, it's like surreal and it's just absolutely perfect. Right away, you've got an appointment spot and a place to meet the stylist. It's perfect. First of all, we want to make sure we see Carla. Carla, I love this. It's gorgeous. <laughs> oh. People can look at all of the images and the range of styles that you and your stylist are capable of. Even though you're a booth rental facility, you know, we know that it's much more like a family there. And so we really want to bring it all together underneath the Hair Bar brand. 
We also want to make sure we're including a wedding specific portfolio so people can really see the range of your work. Your wedding business will expand because of that one feature. It's gorgeous. There is so much personality here. People are going to feel it immediately and just want to come into the physical space because of this beautiful digital space. It's like, who does not want to come hang out with you? Look at that. <laughs> the website was the culmination of months of work, but it was just as fun getting to see some of these on the fly crisis solutions paying off in the long run. Carla kept that COVID era social media push all the way through reopening and her engagement actually grew in spite of the fact that she couldn't even open her doors. And that Google listing we raced to claim at the beginning of COVID was a big boost to the hair bar's online presence. So when we Googled hair salons in Fredonia, New York, you didn't show up in the top three. After we claimed your listing, we then went in and added photos. You are now showing up as number one. Awesome. Thank you. So that is what will come up now when they do a Google search on the hair bar? Yes. Yay. Okay, so under the table, we've got a little bag of surprises for you. Would you mind uh, bringing it up to the table? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we have branded so a number of these. items for you. You know, people love, love coming to the hair bar. You can sell these. These are such great conversation starters. If someone's going to a friend's house and they see this, they're going to start talking about it. And that is how you get new business. You guys are so awesome. Oh, I'm gonna put this on right now. We were just talking about this. <laughs> Oh, oh it's so good! Isn't love that it. adorable? I just am like in complete shock, you guys. <laughs> you have like taken all my hopes and dreams for this, and it's like, it's just, it's here, you know? The deluxe team absolutely nailed it. They really listened to my feedback and took it all into account, and I just really think they did. They did an amazing job at um, giving me something that I wanted that I was comfortable with, too. Now walking in there, it is such a better reflection, I feel like, of what I've always wanted my business to be, that I, I'm more comfortable there now. So when we first met you, you know, we talked a lot about the challenges of being a business owner. You know, you're juggling a lot. There were times where you were kind of wondering if it was all worth it. And I hope that this process has shown you that it really is. But in case you were still wondering if it was all worth it, we wanted to share this with you. Hey Carla, I just want to let you know, since I met you about nine years ago, you have always been my inspiration. I would watch you foil hair, do all these crazy colors, and I always wanted to be like you. And it has been so amazing to watch you build your dream, to watch you grow, not only as a stylist, but also as a friend, as a woman, as a mother. I moved into this small town and you helped me succeed as a barber, as a hairdresser. You're such an inspiration. I absolutely love our work family and I couldn't imagine being anywhere else. I can't let, say enough how proud I am. It's so amazing to watch you grow and I'm just so happy for you. There's some hard times, there's some great times. In all of this, there's like nothing that can slow you down. When this whole thing settles down and life can get back to normal, uh, I'm just excited for what the future holds. Congratulations, Carla! Love, Love you! Oh my gosh. Carla is the most warm, open, kind, loving person ever, and we just clicked immediately. Carla and I are gonna be connected for the rest of our lives, I have no doubt. I feel so blessed, like I'm one of the lucky ones during this whole COVID and everything to have your guys' support with me and just to see that just now was like the icing on the cake. Right now, the deck is stacked against working mothers. But the truth is, it always was. For Carla, opening the hair bar at all was an unbelievable act of passion and will. And keeping it open through 2020 has been nothing short of miraculous. We're lucky she had a dinner, because as much as Carla's kids need her right now, her stylists, her customers, and her community need her too.
You don't have to win the small business revolution to get the marketing makeover that will take your business to the next level. To find out how Deluxe can help your small business, go to deluxe.com revolution. Salesforce is committed to helping small businesses tackle big challenges, and we're honored to join Deluxe in the small business revolution, working alongside the entrepreneurs of Fredonia, New York, to help one town get through these extraordinary times. Visit salesforce.com slash small business to learn more. Fresh and Fancy Flowers is a family business with a unique set of challenges. A lot of kids had daycare. I had a flower shop to grow up in. <laughs> and the opportunity to grow their business as one obstacle we've never faced before. The aggregators came. We got squeezed out. Pretty much emptied my IRA. Will the small business revolution be able to help Charlotte and Michael break free on their own? They need a lot more fresh and a touch more fancy. Now streaming on Hulu, Prime Video, and smallbusinessrevolution.org.